God Hits. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel. I am your girl, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I am wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Guys, today is the final day of the four-part All It Takes is One Move from God series, and I am so grateful that you guys have just sat with me these last couple episodes, last few episodes rather, so that I can get out what the Holy Spirit was showing me about what it's like while we are waiting on God to do that one big move. I want you to make sure you like, you share, subscribe, and you, you share with somebody that you think needs it, and you can get some merchandise as well. I have t-shirts, product services, journals, the whole thing. You can get it from the comments or in the bio, and you know you can get you some merch to go along with it. Now, with that being said, guys, on the first day, we spoke on hearing and knowing, and we, worked, we broke down the acronym of MOVE, for God to move, M-O-V-E. The first day was on meditating, hearing and knowing. The second day was become what you believe. And the letter O was about observing. The next was such a time as this. And the, the letter was V and it was about your virtue. And today we are going to close out on standing still. This is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. And it shows what God can do for you. And this is why the Holy Spirit, I believe, gave me this as the last one. Because some of you are going to need this, this punch. You're going to need Boom, just to get you going and to make sure that you are up to speed on exactly what it is that God is doing for you, even when you feel like he's doing nothing. This is the perfect example of watching God move for you when you think that he is not and what he's doing behind the scenes. This is this scripture to me is that one move like, oh, my God, you just did it. But it also is a scripture, guys, that lets you know that. There were a ton of things that had to happen beforehand before that one move, that big one move from God. There were a series of little moves that we have to partner with God in making so that we, in, we can be in position when these things happen to us and we can say, okay, God, I need you to move. I need you to have that person walk through the door. I need to have that person offer me a contract. I need to have that person do X, Y, and Z, whatever that may be for you, right? The whole purpose of this was to just teach you, like, guys, it's not pie in the sky. God is not Santa Claus, okay? We have to learn how to walk by faith and not by sight, and that is what it often requires. So many times when we need God to come through for us in the miraculous, we get, you know, it's like we, many times that one move, it won't just be a blessing. We usually get to a point where we need a miracle. And so this whole series was to help you to posture yourself to go beyond the blessing, you're not just waiting on the blessing. You need the miracle, the sign, and the wonder, right? And so that's what this is about. So, y'all, let's get into it. This is coming from Joshua chapter 10, verses 12 through 14, and it reads, Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun stand still over Gibeon and moon in the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the people had revenge upon their enemies. Okay, it's a lot to unpack here, but I'll try to do it as quickly as possible. So y'all, do you understand that what I just read was, it said that Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites. Joshua did it. Joshua was the one that took his power, the power of the tongue. He was the one that took that power and he says, son, stand still. And then the moon stopped. He did that. He took the power that worked within him. And if you know your word, I'm, co I'm combining a whole bunch of popular words that people use about death and life being in the power of the tongue. In Ephesians 3.20 about the power that working within you. See, that's that power right there. And a lot of times we want God to do exceedingly, abundantly. Uh, and again, one move, boom, boom, boom but we don't use the power that already works within us. The sun stood still and the moon stopped because he used his power, which means that even while you are waiting on that one move from God, are you using your power? Are you using your power? I'll ask you again. Are you using your power? Now with that power, 
comes the final letter of our four-part series, which is E. Remember, we did M-O-V-E. We did M, meditate, O, observe, V, valor, and E. Today is called execution. Now, we're going to pull that from Deuteronomy 1232, and I'm going to read two different versions of it. It reads, everything that I command you, you shall be careful to do. You shall not add to it or take away from it. Now, here's another version of it. So be careful to obey all the commandments I give you. You must not add anything to them or subtract anything from them. What does that mean? Listen, so basically, even though Joshua had power to say and do what he felt led to do in that moment, he used the power of the tongue. There's always a time consistently in our lives when God is commanding us to do certain things. And he says, be careful to do it. He's saying, listen, if I tell you to do something, don't take away from what I'm telling you and don't uh, add to what I'm telling you because I want to provide you with the perfect execution here. Okay. So I need you to understand something. When God is about to do that one move for you, he has you in mind. He has you in mind. He's not trying to hurt you. He's not trying to harm you by waiting but he also doesn't want you to get so caught up in this one big thing happening that you miss the instructions along the way. You miss the proper execution. You miss the power that you have in speaking the things that he's giving you the power to speak so that you can position yourself for that one move to happen. I hope that this four part series, although again, it wasn't a lot of bells and whistles, but it was a lot of word. We have to stand on our word sometimes when our faith and our function, catch that, are not congruent and the wait feels longer. It feels like it's painful. It feels like we can't get out of the, the, the waiting game and the waiting stage because we just can't see or feel God's hand moving. But this is just to encourage you and inspire you. And if I go back from day one, remember, you have to meditate. That's that M on that move we're waiting for. The next thing we have to do is observe. We have to peep game, y'all. We have to pay attention. Like, what is it that God is trying to show us or do in us that we need to do to be in position for this? And then valor. We have to work on being the best versions of ourselves simultaneously, even when it's hard. We may have seasons and times where we're not focused on that. And that's, that is just reality. Right. We're not robotic. This has to happen. But I tell you this, by the time you get to that E, which is that execution, and you are trying to align yourself with the things of God so that you can see that thing come to pass, it's a game changer. What I want you to know is this, that one move from God takes multiple small moves. And I don't want you to get so caught up in the big thing that you're not taking care of the little things that will make you great. I hope you enjoyed this series. Make sure to go to imwiretoinspire.com or you can go to jazzybrand.com. That's jazzy with an H and a Z. And um, I hope this bless you. I will be doing many more of these and get you some merch. And again, like, share, subscribe. I love you guys. I appreciate you. Stay tuned. I have two podcasts coming out, a brand new podcast and season five of I'm Wired to Inspire podcast as well. So again, remember, all it takes is one move from God, <laughs> just one. I'm Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist. And remember, I'm wired to inspire.